Praise the Lord. <laughs> Boy, I love that song. That was my friend uh, Jeff Fenholt, who went on to be with the Lord. And uh, <laughs> before he sang that song, he was ranting at the church, you know, to get things right. Yeah, it's true. Um, God doesn't want us, you know, fiddling around with devils in the church. He wants us to be free people. The church is the place where Satan attacks. You see, Mr. Trump now is facing this attack. It's really not because of his demeanor or attitude or the way he does his hair or how he talks, you know. But we, we like how he talks. So not everything he says is, you know, so, so sweet, but uh, he's a real New Yorker. I can relate. I'm really from New York. Can you say amen? So the, the, the devil, you know, has, has an agenda to stop God. Uh, the, one of the greatest revelations of this, about the seed, sowing seed for a desired result, this, this anti-prosperity cult, you know, they hate that because they don't want God to take pleasure in the prosperity of a servant. Psalm 35, 27. Also, uh, the devil doesn't want you to get blessed. But I'm so glad today. The Lord's been talking to me all day. Someone lift your hands. The Lord's been talking to me all day. And yesterday, he spoke to me last night, too. Started this last night. I'm thrilled that God talks to me. I don't know how many preachers you can say, unless they're lying, like lying uh, Schiff, pencil neck, or, or Killery, right? Praise the Lord. Killery, Killery. Uh, unless they're lying, they say, the Lord spoke to me, the Lord spoke to me, the Lord spoke to me. I, I was listening to one preacher lady, she's a, she's a woman of color in America, a famous name, I'm not going to say the name. But I used to get a little bit irritated every time she said, and he said, ha, and he said, ha, and, I, and he said, ha. And one day I thought, I looked at her, I thought, did he really say all that? Or are you just preaching? Did he really say it? Come on, I, uh, somebody should grab you by the, by the collar and put you against the wall and said, now tell me, did you hear his voice or not? Well, you, he said, he said, he said. But you know, I, I, you know what I mean? So let's be careful with that, okay? But me, my God, I feel the anointing already. Someone lift your hand. Me, I, I'll tell you, he talks to me, I'm thrilled. Oh my God, thank you for the privilege. The song was Hosanna. You can look it up on the net in the several versions, live, studio, whatever, Hosanna. Uh, what, what, what anointed music. There's such a touch of God on that song. I saw one person worshiping here. A couple of people, you really were getting it when it came on. You, the anointing tells them you're tapped into the grace when you start lifting your hands and doing that. Some people just sit and look and blink, you know. No matter what happens, if it's dead or alive, you don't know yet. You know, praise the Lord. I mean, we need to respond to the presence of God, right? I found a, a, a meme that he wrote. I was shocked when he died. He, Jeff Fenthold, he was a really great, great voice. Wow, what a voice. What a voice he has. What a real gift from God. He was on TBN a lot back in the days, and he did a lot of television, you know, sang on television broadcasts and all that. He wrote a post. He said, I, I, found, I recently discovered that uh, a bunch of crocodiles is called the congregation. <laughs> when you have a bunch of alligators together, you know, it's called a congregation. He thought, oh, that's interesting. Now I really understand what's happening in the church. Praise the Lord, a congregation, a bunch of alligators. You get it? Praise the Lord. You don't get it? All right, that's, that's a good joke. So I thought, yeah, Jeff, that sounds like you, man. We miss you, brother. You're in heaven. He loved the Lord. But, man, he, he would go off on the church and talk some stuff, but correctly so, you know. Correctly so. He had, he had a sharp edge about him, but he, he was right, you know. Like Mr. Trump, anytime he really talks, he's right. You know what I mean? You, you see after the fact what, he ha what happened. So, so here comes the leading political candidate. So the, so the I may get into it in a minute. because I love, I love to talk about politics, you know. People are, people, some people around here say, oh, you shouldn't mix the church with politics. You lying devil. Satan himself gave you that thought. You, your mother dropped you on your head when you were little and you haven't recovered yet. When you were seven years old, your sister came in your room 
with a straw. She was real evil. You had an evil twin or you had an evil sister, you know, and, 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 and they put a, she put a straw in your ear and then poured cement powder in there and then poured the water on top, you know, while you were asleep and you woke up and you were like, <laughs> I can't think right. Hey, what happened? You know, your mind got cemented. Praise the Lord. That's a joke. Come on now. Come on. Come on. So, 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 I mean, what happened to you, the church and politics? The place the church needs to be is every mountain. You know, there's a big teaching about the mountains, right? Thank God for that. But it gets a little bit, you know, everyone's repeating, quoting the other guy. And I, I'm for that because it's a great message. The message came from God. You know, media, the arts, the government, the political world, the family, the, the religious world, the arts, the society, the music world, the entertainment world, all these mountains, you know, of society, of life. But that's where God needs to go and direct head on and confront everybody and straighten everything out. So the Lord spoke to me so clearly. I'm glad I'm back in, my, I'm back in uh, one of the forefronts of my... You know, one of, my, one of my favorite messages, one of my really uh, great topics, things that God's had me to speak upon. You know, I did five series, five volumes on the success, the year of success, right? Remember that? And then uh, two on the love of God, one and two. And I thought I'd continue, but the Holy Ghost interrupted the program again. He's, he's, he's welcome to do that. I, you know, how many of you heard me say that? He's welcome to say anything he wants to say. And, and today I'm going to speak about something very powerful, very, very powerful that everyone needs to get this now. So, but I want to finish this little, little uh, uh, preamble or whatever, entrance points on a different topic. The church needs to invade those birds like me, those nice birds, they always fly up on the thing up here when I'm speaking, they always come. I don't, maybe they like the anointing, I think they like, like my cat Ruby, he liked the anointing. Whenever the presence of God would manifest, he'd come and sit there and put up his back and shake and pour a perp. <laughs> then I'd lay hands on him, he'd fall over, you know. That cat lived to 20 years old and wasn't sick, just went to sleep one night uh, in New York, praise the Lord. I was long gone, but he, you know, so I think I'll, I'll have a ruby when I get there. You know, animals can be, he's coming in this cat, oh my God, hey. What are the congregation members, praise the Lord. So, uh, they call them a pack of hyenas, a pack of uh, whatever, and a pride of lions, right? And a herd of buffaloes, right? Elephants, right? And then they have another, the hyenas, I think, I can't remember the name of the hyenas, is what, a group of hyenas, but a group of crocodiles is a congregation. I thought, how funny is that? So we're not supposed to meet the devil in the spiritual hospital on the earth hello we're supposed to meet jesus lift your hands and his main thing and i want to speak on this is listen to this god wants you well and he wants you wealthy healthy and sane in your mind and well in your mind i'm going to deal with it, those three those three points here he wants you wealthy he wants you healthy and he wants you okay in the head he doesn't want you psychotic. So, so here, here's how it happens. There's an anointing of grace and mercy for God to make a man rich. I found out it's not all by your sweat and effort, though that does produce, and the Bible does say so. But when God wants a person to be blessed, he just blesses them and shows them favor, and things start to happen. I can't tell you the miracles that have been happening the last many days. I'm getting testimonies, and I, it makes me cry. I have tears in my eyes because I think, did I pray that hard for that? Did I, you know, shout, you know, and he said, huh, he said, huh, and I'm up against the wall and I'm running around the room and I'm fasting and putting like, you know, a sack over my head, you know, and a prayer shawl from the Holy Land and pouring oil on myself and screaming and sitting there for six hours. Did I do that? No, I didn't do it. And miracles are happening. Phew, go rahari chi. One lady wrote me from America, she became a partner of $111 a month, and she just felt led to do it. I was talking about Deuteronomy 111, the power of a thousand times more blessing, a thousand times more blessing, and she just uh, decided to sow that every month. At first she wrote she got thousands of dollars to pay all her bills after she sowed the first one. Lift your hand. Then, now, she's continuing, and she says everything around her is experiencing favor. 
relatives came together, things that needed to be worked out that didn't get worked out in years, this and that and that and that. She wrote me the testimony, I can read it to you. I don't want to take time right now to thumb through my phone, but we need to have a testimony department. Hello, 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 hello. Testimony, someone could gather all the testimonies. We have a screen. We could put them there, type them out, make sure they're spaced right and up, and we can show I could read them. And I just had a vision of a studio. I, I like studio. I'm a studio guy. I want to have beautiful table, desk, and microphone thing, and the boom mic that comes down and the whole thing with the screen in the background and we can do many things, screens I could read from. If I ever need a teleprompter, it can be there or just have a big screen where I can do that. Maybe I could have a mouse on my desk and the computer's over there off the camera. I just had a vision of that about 10 minutes ago. I was just sitting there in the presence of God before I came up here a few minutes ago and I just had a vision of that. I saw it, I saw myself with a mouse that I can click the computer's over there, the screen's over there, I'm reading it, you can't see it on the air. Or maybe I'll have it down here, so I'll do it here under the table. <laughs> so no one knows I'm click clicking the thing, but I'm controlling the screens and I'm going somewhere. When I need a scripture, I could pull it up and I'll have some tech people that can also do that with me. We flow and everything is world class, 21st century, 22nd century coming you know, multimedia, brilliant excellence that anywhere in the face, anybody on the face of the earth can watch. And I'm also taking screenshots, snapshots of, of buildings, you know, decor in buildings. We have a building, we have the sanctuary, we have the studio, the office is there. We need to have that. Everything is stationary and set up. When people come, it's the best experience they've ever had. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something about me. I'm not going to change anything I'm doing to suit any culture. I have my own culture. It's heaven's culture on the earth. Praise the Lord. People, I, I don't know any place in the world that needs more teaching than people here. But have people seen a profound teacher like me? No. All this noise and shouting and screaming and carrying on, you know, and that's all fine. That has its place. No problem. If God wants someone to, to flow like that, it's okay with me. I'll come and have church with you. Let's do it. But, you know... What do people, what do people want, you know? I, I li you can listen to many people preaching and you just get nothing out of it, you know what I mean? Nothing at all. You don't learn anything. You don't get anything to fuel the fire of your life to move forward in the things of God to get anything great done with your life. That's sad. That's really sad. Now, one thing we need to do, and I want you to make a note of this, we need to redeem the time. Because the time is now, the switch is on, the thing is ready. It's not the pilot light. In, in American stoves, they have this thing underneath called the pilot light. It's like a little flame that stays there all the time, so when you switch the gas on, uh, it, or the oven, it like puts the whole thing on, right? but it's always burning, it's always on. So that's like God. The pilot light is already on, but it's for us to turn the switch, to turn the thing on, to get something cooking. <laughs> and if you wait, come on, that's the problem. If you wait, you'll be late, and you won't be great. You'll be a sad excuse for a life that's supposed to be huge and big and magnanimous and blessed and prosperous. That's number one, redeem the time. Number two, please, this is notes from the Holy Ghost here. Before I get into the, the formal message and a couple of other things. Maybe some political chat or two, I might do it. It needs to be things that need to be said. But um, number two, you have to decide what your focus is going to be. So I felt like people that I know and I, can, I connect with, you know, we've had like friendship and relationship, very powerful people. And I just decided again, I, I think I've done it before. It's obvious if I'm traveling around the world, I'm not stuck in no church in America. Praise the Lord. I'm not stuck in nobody's Bible school or, or church or anywhere. I'm not stuck in anybody's, you know, thing. So obviously, I'm, I'm, I've already made the decision by my action because my feet are moving, right? But in your mind, you have to begin to break off. Listen to me. You have to break off stuff that makes you like half-witted half in your thing that you're supposed to be doing. 
and you need to dive into it with total focus. Do you think Jeff Bezos, this bald-headed guy, boy, he's not a good-looking guy, but he has a lot of money, so some women might find him attractive. Praise the Lord. Even with his bald head and his beady, funny eyes and his nose, the way he looks. You know the way he looks? Jesus, God in heaven. Oh. If I was a woman, I'd be like, ah, uh, no, you ain't the one, dude. Moving right along. Praise the Lord. Anyway, but he got, how did he make $9 billion last week? Extra money. If he hadn't focused on what he's doing in Amazon all these years. Lift your hands. He, he focused and built that system and that thing so hard and so, so powerfully that when the market decides to swing up a little bit, he gets richer. And then if it swings down a little bit, he loses some shekels, but it's, it could never be enough to touch his massive wealth because he already built it so hard. And, and the Lord's asking this question. Now, I feel this. Now, now, God didn't tell me this before now, but he's telling me right now to say this right now. He's saying this to me here right now. What is it you're building? What is it you want to build? Now, people that are with me, and we're building something. There are some people that are with me, connected with me. We're building something. We've, we've built something. And some things are in the works all over the planet. You know, I don't talk about this stuff, but I'm up in the night. I'm up all night. Sometimes the phone is going all night around the clock. Like last night, I'd sleep a little bit, wake up. Then I woke up real early, like 5 o'clock in the morning. I couldn't sleep. I was wired. I was like, oh, here's that energy again. Lord, it's not time to wake up. It's too early, please. So I had to just wait until I could feel it again sleep another hour or two and just get, be ready for the day because I hadn't slept but an hour or two. And I'm on the phone and I'm messaging with people and things are going, 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 going. You have no idea. But we don't need to do less of that. We need to do more of that in all the waking hours of the day and the sleeping hours of the day. Building something. Another thing is relationships. So redeem the time, and then you need to make some, you need to make some decisions to, to do what? To focus fully, without distraction, on what God wants you to be, be doing. And then you need relationships. Number three, you need relationships. That'll help fuel the fire. People that are for you, not against you. People that are definitely positive about you and toward you, not neutral. You got to watch these people that are neutral, especially in the church. Because, you know, a, a preacher, especially if he's got a lot of people coming, he's supposed to smile at everybody. Hallelujah. He's supposed to greet everybody. He's supposed to act like, you know, when you go up and tell them something or you talk to them and say hi, they're supposed to grab you with love and make you feel like you're at home. But are you really? No, you're not. If you're not in some functional participation mode, in that place, that it's a place of grace, not just a place to take up space. It's a place of grace that you could be running your race and something could be happening. The glory is on your face and your race by the grace and something is moving forward every minute, every minute, every minute. But I gotta, I gotta tell you something, that doesn't happen everywhere. That does not happen everywhere. So the fact that people are like switched on in the realm of functionality, that's wonderful. Because guess what? You get blessed by that. <laughs> Write it down. I get blessed by my functionality. Oh, yes. Now that's a little bit different than the mercy of God that comes to make a man rich. Because God can just decide to bless you and favor you. And all of your sweat and labor can't add up enough to it. One day of favor is worth more than a thousand days of labor. One divine act of his goodness and his favor upon you to produce something, to give you something. is worth more than all the year, even years of labor could pr ever produce. You could get done in five minutes with the touch of God more than you could, in, could have in five years or 50 years. 
of your life. So we can't look at it like uh, it's a rat race, uh, you know, dog eat dog, rat chase rat, turtle and the hare, tortoise and the hare, you know, the old cartoon. The rabbit ran real fast and the tortoise went slow. And then the rabbit ran out of steam and stopped and took a holiday on the way. And the tortoise kept going, dun 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 slow. And everybody's mocking the tortoise, saying, "You idiot, you're too slow, you can't make it. That hare, that hare can run, you know, a hundred times faster than you." But the tortoise crossed the finish line, and the hare was sleeping somewhere on the side because he went fast. So it shows you that that's even vanity, you know, to think that you're you're so great and so fast, you could just do everything yourself. We need the touch of God. Lift your hands. We need the touch of God. God had me prophesy uh, that President Trump, well, before he was the president, when he was the businessman, 2015, the Lord said, he's my choice to be the 45th president. And I don't know if they call it 46 when the next term comes. I think it's 45 times 2, or maybe it's 46 because it's another term. I don't know how they're going to, I don't know how they do that. We have to look at that. Probably it's just 45, and it happens twice, I think, but, but we'll see. But uh, he'll be reelected. How, how do you like this week? God got him out of that mess and embarrassed everybody that was against him. And the lady that ripped this, his speech as a total act of Jezebelic rebellion. What a foolish woman. You know, a wise woman builds her house or tears it down with her own hand, or, or, or a foolish woman tears it down with her own hands. She tore her own house when she did that. She thought she's ripping his house, she ripped her own house. And now half the world is coming back against her. She won't be there. She won't be there. And in America, you need to win the election to get any pos position of power. So let's say she has her elective office seat. What if someone runs against her and people are so tired of her, they just vote for the other one? It could happen. I'm praying for a Republican slam dunk in November, all the way down the ticket, Republican, President, and all the other people on the Republican side. Many, 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 many more thousands, hundreds of thousands, even millions of people are going to do that because of all these shenanigans from these demoncrats. Praise the Lord. Pencil neck, shifty shift, the liar, penguin, Jerry, Nadler, wah, 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 he walks like that, and, and, and pathetic Pelosi. So here's the front runner of the Democratic Party, quid pro, quid pro pro Joe. I can't say it. That's what they nicknamed a nickname, Sleepy Joe, Creepy Joe, you know? He thought, hey, I, I'll be the guy. And now because they came against the anointed, the Cyrus, like we see in Isaiah 45, who likens to the Mr. Trump, I'll, I'll take a man from the world and I'll put my hand upon him and something will get done. Then we see about the gates opening up, new prosperity, new wealth, new treasures. This is all happening in America now. The economy is going up. Everything is going anyway. I don't want to list all that. You could watch that on our Facebook page. And, you know, how many have been looking at the Facebook page? Took time to go through the political stuff a little bit. Take time to watch that. You'll learn something about the system, what's going on. I only, I don't post them all. I post the ones that I think really get to the jugular vein, you know? The real potent, I really like what was said. I think it's accurate, it's true, and it really exposes and it really brings the point. That's the only ones I put. But of course, there's hundreds of others of things of people chattering now about all this. You don't want to listen to everybody. You want to just listen to the one that can make the point or something you need to know about it all. And I've, I've been doing that. So that's on facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton, all right? On the personal page, on, the, on my ministry page, facebook.com forward sign DR for Dr. Dr. Thomas Manton. I don't put any of that stuff. The, the ministry page is only on ministry posts. Mostly all the, all the live videos, all of the, the words, scriptures, only that. Nothing else. I won't touch that page with anything else. And we want to develop that page more, just for the ministry stuff, not anything personal. You know, my personal page, forward sign, just do the URL. It's easier to get you right there instead of searching the name. Because I don't know how many dummy accounts there are and how many Thomas Mantons, uh, how many Thomas Mantons are on the world. I don't think there's that many. 
But if you look at the, the list of things, I look one day, I was like, with all these Thomas, I said, are these real people? I know that's my name, but I don't know about all these other ones. I know there's one cousin of mine, he's real. And I think there's another one in another country that has the same name, funny enough. Funny enough. Not a very common name, but there's a whole list. So just do facebook.com in your browser, forward sign, Thomas Manton. That's it. Just do, the, do it as a URL. Click it. It'll open up right to my page. You don't have to try to find which one is my page. And you'll see so many pages, and you're like, which one is which? No. Okay, you'll, they'll get you right there. So the political updates. So the Iowa caucus happened last week and the Democrats couldn't even give the votes. They were hiding it because there were so few no, in number. Lift your hands. They are losing the plot. How many remember the prophecy I gave like a year and a half, two years ago? Before all this, long time ago, not last month or two months ago. Look, I wonder about these people that come up, you know, all of a sudden the hot item comes and they're like, wow. I prophesied that, or I'm prophesying that, or after the fact, or around the time. Kind of fishy, right? But you know, if it was said like years ago, when there was no hint or talk about this, in fact, it seemed the opposite at the time. Like these people were making headway, and then all of a sudden, now it hits. I was wondering about that, because the Lord said to me, he said, my son, prophesy this, say this, declare this. A mass exodus will come out from the Democratic Party in America. A mass exodus of people. You know, that's a lot of people. You know, that's not a few thousand. That's like millions, right? A mass exodus is how many? Millions of people. Lot, so many you can't count. Not exodus, because that could be of however many there are. But when, when it's in mass, he said mass exodus. Watch the word. That means a lot are going to come out. Is it happening now? Whoa. There's one post, I found it late last night, like 3 o'clock in the morning, I found it. I put it on there, you'll see it, it's on, uh, it's recent. About some guy talking about, he's sitting there with his, a funny hat, you know these millennial kind of blogger guys, you know, they look kind of, wonder who took them to school, how to dress or what, who, where their mama is. But they still live in the mother's basement. They never went shopping for anything to wear, you know? How does a guy sit with like a monkey hat? You know those things you pull over your head? I call them monkey hats. And you sit on the TV, like you're doing a TV show and you got that little pullover thing on your head. Jesus in heaven, is it winter out in your house? Or where are you filming it, in your basement? Anyway. I said anyway. And the guy's going on and on. But he did, a, he did an expose about people on C-SPAN. C-SPAN is not a political, uh, it's not a conservative or democratic. It's right in the middle. It just broad, it's not fake news. It just broadcasts reality of how it is from whatever side it's coming. And Democrats, old hardline Democrats were calling in the station saying, and writing into the station, even older people said, I've had enough of this Democratic Party. Because now you see how these people are acting. I've had enough. I'm out. I won't vote that way again. I'll vote Republican. Lift your hands. This is a fulfillment of the prophecy. So mean, meaning there'll be a greater landslide in November. Instead of a short little thing. You know, election day, after you prophesy to the whole world. I mean, I, I kind of gave up caring. How many remember when Kibaki was sworn in in Kenya? December 27, 2007. And then all hell broke loose and they're trying to overturn it. He didn't get sworn in till Sunday. But well, that was a Sunday night, yeah, and then all hell broke loose. But after the election, Thursday, it was going on all those days and everybody, the media was paid. Hello. And they were saying, this other guy's up, this other guy's up, this other guy's up, and then it, it wasn't true at all. And then the thing came through. Boom, this is the way the votes went. And people were calling me. One evangelist lady called me. She had a high-pitched voice. She says, Prophet! Can't do her voice. Maybe that gay guy who's running for president in America can do the voice. I don't know if he can. No, maybe, maybe he has a deep voice. Prophet! But I gotta hold, I gotta hold myself when I do this. Prophet! <laughs> if Kibaki doesn't win! 
What are we going to do? I said, Mama, just wait. God spoke. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what the Lord said? Kibaki was going to be reelected. 2002, he was elected. How many remember that? 2007, the Lord said, I prophesied that he would be reelected. So I said, just wait. Then I decided, hey, this media is tainted, man. The fake news hit Kenya. Can you imagine? Fake news in Kenya. Back then in 2007, imagine. So I said, I'm turning this TV off, bless God. Then the Holy Ghost, I was sitting in my living room, the Holy Ghost tapped me on the shoulder and said, turn the TV on. I said, Lord, it better be good because I don't want to watch that fake news, these lying devils anymore, people getting paid saying all this and doing the contrary because this guy wants to take the election, uh, this other guy. And I was like, no. Okay, Lord, with uh, apprehension, trepidation, uh, you're telling me, I hear you, I hear you. He said, he said it again, turn the TV on, son. I was like, yes, sir. Click my heels. <laughs> Stand to attention and salute. Yes, sir. I, I got the remotes. Then I had these strong boxes and these other satellites. I had like eight remotes. And I had a, a technical guy uh, come and, and narrow it down to like three remotes from eight. Can you imagine having eight remotes and I got to do this one for this and this one for that to get all these different channels because I had all these satellite dishes on my house. So the Lord said, turn it on. So I turned it on and the minute I turned it on, it was, it was uncanny. It was just after 6 p.m., around 6 p.m. on Sunday night. I'll never forget it. December 27, 2007, Sunday night. It was 20, December 27th or 28th. I think it was the 27th. It's about 6 p.m. I didn't know what I was going to see. I had no idea. I hadn't been watching the news. I didn't know if the results were done. I said, well, I'll hear about it after a while, whenever they get around to giving the final count. I don't know if that'll be next week, this week. I don't know, but I'll, I'll, I know I'll hear about it. The people are bringing my phone off the hook. I know they're all going to tell me. I had all my people out there calling me. So... Uh, I turned it on, and all of a sudden, here comes, here comes Kibaki walking like this. They show him walking, you know, how he walks. And he gets the thing, and the guy's there, and he takes the book, and he just signs it with his hand. I said, what's that? Lord, have mercy. And then they, 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 they announced what it was. I thought, oh, Jesus. Lift your hands. Prophecy fulfilled. Hey, look, I'm the messenger. Do you don't like the message? Talk to the boss. Ain't my message. None of it. In fact, when I'm bringing people from the Bible, I don't apologize for, for me saying it. I won't. And I don't apologize for what it says. Whatever it is, it is. God said it. That's what we need to understand. For whatever reason that is. Then next thing you know, hell broke loose. I got like 10,000 phone calls on my phone one day. Phone started ringing at 5 a.m., didn't stop till 2 a.m. I tried to answer as many calls as I could. It wore me out. Uh, after that, I just couldn't do it again. You know, this was year, those years ago. I answered all those. Can you imagine? I answered calls all day. I think my phone said I had about 10,000 calls and SMSs in one day. And I try, every time it rang, I tried to answer. I don't know how many I answered, thousand, thousand, a couple thousand, who knows. And all these missed calls, all these numbers that I didn't know, people calling. Because the violence broke out. People went crazy in Kenya. But I had prophesied that the year before. In the month of, eight, in the month of May 2007, I was in a meeting in Nairobi and I saw a vision of a wave of violence coming. The place was packed out the door in this hotel ballroom right in the center of town in the capital city of Nairobi when we had the meeting. The Lord showed me the vision. So it happened. Then I met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs in his office, Raphael Tuju. Someone brought me to see him, and I told him for 50 minutes, 5-0, we, we weren't supposed to have that amount of time. He sat quiet the whole time with big eyes looking at me. He didn't say a word. 
for 50 minutes and I told him everything that the Lord said was going to happen in Kenya. He just, at the, end of, at the end of it all, he just said, thank you, sir, very much. I'll inform His Excellency and I'll tell others and thank you for coming. And that was it. He didn't know what to say. Probably, he, he might not have believed half of it. Then in January, when all the violence was going on, I was at a, uh, a very posh hotel here, having the buffet there, and sitting at the table. All of a sudden, this, this gentleman comes over, and I, I kind of, I was looking down. I think I was having the tomato soup. It was really nice. And I saw these hands come on the table, and he, he looked forward. He said, hi, hi, Prophet, do you remember me? I looked up, and I thought, yeah, he said his name. I said, oh my God, there you are. How are you? He looked really, he looked really messed up. He looked stressed, tired, his hand was shaking a little bit. And he said, I just want to tell you, I remember everything you said to me in my office. It has all happened. He said, I am amazed and His Excellency is amazed. And this is just like a beyond. But you told us this would happen. Then there was threats of like mass action with this and the Lord had me stand on a platform and say, mass action will become mass nothing this week. It all fizzled out. And that whole violence thing fell off within a few weeks. Thank God, because it could have been like a mini Rwanda, you know. But the Lord wasn't having it. I had people calling me, telling me, prophet, you need to leave there. It's dangerous. You need... And then one guy says, I think the Holy Ghost. I said, what? The Holy Ghost? What are you calling his name for? Did he speak? He's like, well, I'm just, I'm just scared and nervous. I said, don't invoke his name to say what he didn't say. He told me to be here right now. I'm fine. In fact, I went to town when everybody had left, and I, was, I got out of the car, and I was walking on the street all by myself. Nairobi City was a ghost town. And you saw these soldiers in military uniforms with machine guns everywhere. I walk up to them and say, I... Walked past them, I was going around. I thought, boy, I got the whole city to myself. Woo, I wish it was like this every day. No traffic, no jam, no chaos. Kind of weird, you know. Then he's driving down one road, and all of a sudden they got the military, the, the, the soldiers standing across a whole way to block a road off, can't go that way. I was like, hey, I understand. I'm not turning, no, I'm not coming at you. I'm going around. They like just standing and looking at you. I thought, no, this road, you can't go down this road. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was amazing that time. But that whole thing got shorted out by the word of the Lord. So I'm going somewhere So with this. So if God could speak like that, when he tells us in his word, how much he wants to do for us, why don't we yet believe him enough? Lift your hands. I want to release right now of everybody, myself first, because I'm getting a revelation this like last night and today, to use the gift of faith. We need to be faithful and perseverant in the focus of what God's given us to do and believe him to sort out the rest, not to look left or right, here or there, you know, this way or that way, huh? And think, try to figure out, like, what's up, what, when, who, where, and why, and you're like, oh, God, the Lord says, I can work anything out. Use your faith to rearrange the, the men on the chessboard. You know, people that God wants to be with me, they're going to be with me. Praise the Lord. The way he, wa he wants, God has a system like when you obey him and focus fully on what he wants you to be doing, he'll reward you for that. Write the word down, reward. Write the word down, favor. Mercy, right? Mercy. By the mercy of God. I, I was hearing this today. I was hearing this. We need to do good things in this world. We need to have great relationships. I was just talking about that's another one of the points. Re number three, relationships. Or number four, whatever that was. Relationships that help us get to where we're going, but we also need to be a blessing to people. Because that's all seed. You sow, you reap. You sow, you reap. You sow, you reap. The Lord said in Genesis 8.22, Seed time and harvest will not cease. You sow, you're going to reap. Paul told the Philippians in Philippians 4.19, he said, you were, 
Before that, he said, you are the faithful ones to support me, and because of that, I'm going to pronounce this blessing upon you, my God. And he didn't say your God. He said my God, the one I'm walking with. I'm pronouncing this as a reward harvest for your seed. Not for everybody. It wasn't for everybody. People like to claim that as a, as a promise of money scripture. Well, it really doesn't apply in context unless you've done what those people did. Because Paul said before that, nobody could, the other churches, the other people, they didn't want to communicate with me. But you did. Lift your hands. You that do, you that are doing. So, but several of our partners are watching online. So I say this, my God, the one that's with me, Jehovah, my boss, Prophet Thomas Manton's boss, the one who put his mantle and anointing upon my life to help you prosper, you that are doing things for me and with me, I pronounce that my God will supply for you everything you need and want. Now that's not for everybody. But it's for some people, special people, partners, so we need to understand that God can work anything out if we can believe him for it, but we got to be faithful in the diligent aspect of it. So like, let's say you're looking at some church or you're part of some church, you really don't feel like you're getting anything out of it enough, you're not functional there. Make the decision to switch it off. I'm not telling you, any, I'm not telling you to do anything I haven't done. I'm, I've done it again this week. As I was saying, it's obvious by my footsteps that you know, I'm, on the mission, I'm on the mission of God around the world internationally. So it's obvious, by my, not by my words, but by my works. You know? <laughs> Jesus said, if you, don't, if you don't understand my words, well, look at my works. Look at what I do. Look at what manifests. Look what happens. And you see God in that, in me, through me, in that. But I had to make a decision to stop giving time to certain things. Like, hey, you know what? Why am I, why am I uh, trying to figure out what this person's doing and what they're doing and all that? You don't have to do all that. Dive into the assignment that God's given. If you do, you'll be prosperous. If you do, you'll be successful. And don't be a busybody about everybody else's business. Like, you have to know about this church, what they're doing, what car. Who cares? I don't give a flip. You know? I got, I got enough work. I was telling one of my people in America, I said, I, I have enough work to last a lifetime. I told a couple of people, a few people, that, in, different individuals in different states and different cities that are working with me. And uh, I said, I, I have enough to last a lifetime. Why, why should I concern myself with anyone else? Same God that anointed anyone else anointed me. I saw a man of God, very famous, I won't say the name. He was doing a... He was doing a teaching, he started like a, a, a teaching class, you know, institute from his ministry. And he says, well, there's the call of God, there's the call of man, and there's the self-call, you know. How do you know someone's called of God? I thought, this is very elementary. Maybe some people need this, but I'll tell you what happened to me. In 1986, the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me, laid his hands on my head and said, my son Thomas, I've called and ordained you to be my prophet to the nations. How's that? Did I have anything to do with that? I didn't even know what a prophet was. We didn't come from a Christian home. I had just gotten born again. I was a bodybuilder. I got saved in the health food store owner's house. They invited me over, and that's when the Lord walked in and visited, and I had to accept him there. I think it was like, it was like accept or die. You know, it was like that, like it was like uh, I was up against the wall. The Lord walked in, and it was like, uh, here I am. Like when Jesus appeared to Paul, uh, Saul of Tarsus on Damascus Road, did Paul, was Paul asking him to come? No, not at all. So was Paul called of God? Absolutely. Can anybody dispute that he was called? No, not in this lifetime or any lifetime. The miracles, the word, the revelation, the movements, the mission, all spoke for itself. So we need to dive in. Boy, this is powerful. We need to dive in. But I want to tell you from, uh, from the word, from a doctrinal standpoint, God wants you prosperous. He wants you healthy. He wants your mind right. Anything that disturbed you 
to the point of getting you off course in any way, you need to work on correcting that. Lift your hands. Anything at all that took your time, distracted your focus, distracted your mind, you need to get back on the, back on the road. Also, if God's called you to be a public figure, you can't stay hidden all your life. If God's called you to be a, an entrepreneur, you can't uh, wait all your life and just hope one day it's going to happen. You've got to dive into it. But that, see, what that does, it, it, it doesn't just make it that diligent work you're doing, the source of your well-being and blessing, it just really, it really also shows God that you're serious. Lift your hands. Oh my, I tell you, people talk about, you have to work, 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 work. You got to work, you got to get up early, you got to sleep late, you got to, you got to go, go, go. Yes, you do, 100%. There's no substitute for that. But a big part of that is showing yourself that you're serious to God. Then he goes, ah, I got a serious one. Now I can show some favor. Because what you really want in the level that you want it at, only God can provide it. Two scriptures that came to me very strong last week, and I just want to say them right now. I didn't get to say them to, before last Sunday. Not, I didn't get to say them last Sunday, but I got to say them right now while they're in my memory. God, I don't want to forget these. Psalm 127, I think it is. Verse 1, I think it is. Unless the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain. And another scripture, before I forget, is God, I don't know where the address is of it is, we'll fi find it and put it on the screen. God inhabits the praises of his people. You take that literally. You ever wonder why when there's like some, unless there's some dead cow singing, you know, I mean, you know, you know, just something that's spiritually devoid of anointing. But real praise, when you really praise, God said what? He said, I inhabit the praises of my people. So if you're really mine and your praise is real praise, I'll be there. He said he inhabits it. So if you ever wonder why God showed up in any kind of worship service or any kind of musical thing, it's because he said that promise. Not, not to mean that the people are so great or everything's so great or so wonderful, but when it's real praise, from a real person that's his, he said, I'll be there. And your obedience will bring favor. Write that down. My obedience will bring me favor. Number four and number five, wherever I am, you're not supposed to do everything yourself. That's the relate. It also flows as a sub portion of uh, relationship. You don't just need relationships. You need the right relationships. You know, some relationships are so wrong, they'll drive you half crazy. I know what I'm talking about. Just had another wave of them come through. They come as different disguises, like driver, <laughs> assistant, cleaner, whatever. And they have so many issues that you're like, wow, man. It's the anointing that turned it inside out. So here's the thing. We pray for everybody to get delivered, yes? God, Jesus is the deliverer. Number one, he's the prosperer, if I can say that. He's the healer, number two. He's the deliverer, number three. So he's the one that gives you wealth and health and deliverance from these things that go on in your mind and your heart, from devils, from issues. But I want to say something. Claim that right now. Claim wealth, health, and deliverance right now, right now. I tell you, I speak it over every person in Jesus' name. However, someone's process of deliverance does not, it's not fair that it gets in your space to drive you crazy. They need to do it outside. So once that thing erupts like that, you go, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Messing up my peace, stressing me out. You're not supposed to live in, let me give you another statement. You're not supposed to live in stress and unrest and with contentious people. A, a scripture for contention, two of them. One is where there's strife, a striving person that causes strife. There's confusion and every evil thing can work there. That's bad, that's bad. 
I'll say it again, that's bad. That's not for you. And also the scripture of Proverbs, <laughs> when Solomon said, the wise one said, it's better to make my, my bed on the rooftop in the rain than stay down in the palace with a contentious woman. Hello? The spirit of contention, oh my, people, someone deeply wounded, deeply scarred, something's wrong, and they don't get to work that out in your space. So now your job becomes how to show them the road to go kick rocks again. Lift your hands. Good African statement. I heard, I heard it years ago, some guy yelled at some other guy, and he had a, he had a pretty westernized accent, like he's a bit first worlder. First world-ish, you know? You can tell he's been exposed a little bit. He told this guy, he said, don't talk to me like that. Go kick rocks. I was like, huh! My ears went, Bee! You ever see people with big ears? And they have their hair covering their ears like I do? See, my ears are not so big. I don't have those big, long, floppy ears. But thank God I wasn't in Messiah land when I was a baby that they get to do that, you know, thing on my ears. Praise the Lord. Thank God. Because you're, you're a spark for life. And people are so cruel. I saw a guy walking yesterday in the street, two days ago. Maasai guy. Someone say Maasai guy. And he had the thing in his ears. You just can see it. You know, there's a big hole there, and there's like a, a thing. And when you move like this, it kind of moves like that. And then he's, I don't know if they're Kikuyus or what they were. I, another tribe, you know. Walking past, and they started talking. I'm, a, I'm tapped into the communication realm. I, I can understand your language or not. I kind of, I know what you're saying. I've been around the world. When people are having their conversations in their language, I usually know what they're talking about. I can even tell them. Sometimes I've done it. I've, I've called people out many times and said, I understand what you're saying. Be careful. Someone teach me in Swahili. said, I speak Swahili. I know what you're saying. Just, I need that in Swahili so I can tell some fool that thinks because they're talking in Swahili, I don't know what they're saying. All these languages. You had a, they had to hide from the Brits, the colonizers, right? So that's why people go, they start talking in the presence of the white man, you know? In presence of the Mzungu, you know, they start talking in the Swahili. I say, speak English! Or oh, get out of my presence. Not that it's not okay to speak Swahili. That's, your, that's a mother, that's a tongue, it's okay. But don't do that with me, man. Let's, I'm, I'm here, I'm in the conversation. If you want to have a private conversation, go somewhere private. And talk whatever you want. And if you want to say something bad, my God is good and he's with me, so watch out. Locked and loaded. Son, daughter, watch out. Ah. Is that a word? Is that some kind of greeting? It almost sounds like watch. Watch out. Habakkuk 2, verse 1. Watch what it, watch, stand on the wall and watch, because and, I'm going to see what he's going to say. Some belligerent beast of a woman, excuse my French, or Chinese, wrote me some nasty stuff, and all we were doing was inviting people to a, a conference, an event. And I started writing back some nasty stuff. I was shocked. I was like, is this the same? Maybe someone got your phone. Maybe it's not you. Maybe it's a devil that got your number. Hello. Like some fool got in our group one time and started... Mocking Jesus, a total devil from hell. I don't know where his number came from. It was hard to get that fool out. Some of it we had to just leave it and let it wash away. And finally the guy, you know, what? I, pr I pray the fire on them starts to fry their hide and then they opt out themselves. That's happened many times. They want to talk rubbish. They're the one that will, will escape because it's too hot in the group. You don't know you're burning yourself. You're setting yourself ablaze with kerosene when you're messing with, uh, our, you know, talking in our forum. So I see them get out. So this lady, are you enjoying this? This lady started writing back some stuff and I was in a bad mood. I was driving to a place in the rain Everywhere was like an open sewer in Kenya. Mud everywhere, floods everywhere. I thought, what in the H am I in the H and the who and the what, in the where and the why and the when am I at here? 
I looked up to the Lord. I said, are you kidding me? I didn't know whether to cry or laugh. I was stressed. I'm driving. The, the, too many foolish drivers would almost drive you more crazy, so I decided to drive myself. Some said, oh, it's only a short ride. Not far. Jesus, it took over an hour in the rain. I'm driving all the way there. While I'm in the car driving, I start getting these messages. I thought, what? When this person started to talk rubbish, I mean, mocking me, calling me names, I thought, no, no, no. Not the person, not the one, not the time. No time is appropriate, but especially right now. So I try writing them back, see if I can fix it. Like, excuse me, like, do you talk like this? Or, is this you? Are you okay? Yeah. You know, in a friendly way. And guess what? It got more hotter, more worse. I thought, Jesus. So I blocked the person while I'm driving. Blocked the person. And I, and I, thought, I was so upset. It's like... It's like you just shot like artillery at me. And I'm in my car, in my space. I mean, I, I'm like a victim. I'm like, it's come like this from a person. You would, a person that calls himself a gospel minister. And someone that I even helped. Not complaining, I'm preaching. Praise the Lord. You know, come on, lift your hands. I'm happy as all get out. I'm really happy. I'm not, no, I'm not, in the, I'm not in a bad frame of mind at all. I'm happy. Can you tell? Can you feel me? I'm all right. I'm fine. I'm just, I'm just telling the story. I'm preaching. Not complaining. I'm trying to teach somebody something here. So I thought, oh no, devil. Ooh, I don't accept. Not doing that to me. Nope, 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 nope. Woo! Glory to God. Not doing that to me. So I felt like I've I'd been hit, you know, like I took a. How do I do it? My blood was boiling. You know, how could this person, this is a person that I helped. I helped them with things. Can you imagine? Lift your hands. Someone in the church that's known, that's a gospel, a preacher, a singer and all that, and they're talking like that. Is it really them? How could they do such a thing? I was like, what? And the place I was going to when I got there was full of mud. It's like you're driving on the side, of the side of the moon, the kind of side of the moon that, you know, you see in the picture, you think you're going to fall off and end up down in outer space. You and your car flying through the air. Ah, falling to your death a thousand miles. That's the way to land well. Everything's mud. Everything stinks. You open the window. The stench of the mud and the sewers running all together. Hotels and places packed with people, people walking in the mud everywhere. I stopped at one hotel and I told this guy, I can't go any further. I'm not going to try to drive around. I went the way the GPS said it doesn't exist. The address, this could happen in Africa. The address where you're saying the street, the road, it doesn't exist on the GPS. It's too primitive. It's too messed up. So I went back around. I went back to the hotel. I found a place where all these cars are parked and there's nowhere to park in the mud. People walk. And I thought, I'm staying right here. So I call him, find me here. Then you know the place? Put in your GPS, the name of this hotel. Find me, and I'll follow you to that, to the place we're going. It's like a leaders meeting. We were planning an event, and it was at somebody's house. Or Lord have mercy. What off? <coughs> I wouldn't do it again. I'm not doing that again. Now that one time, one time in my life, I'll never go back. Bless Jesus. Thank God I didn't say no towns or, ooh, good, I got away with it. No towns or names, right? So I can tell the story. I'm, I'm, I'm gifted like that. Thank you, Lord. I didn't divulge the location, so anybody watching not know that I'm talking about them, when well, maybe I am. There were church ladies coming out of the thing, walking in the mud, like they're having a church event in the hotel. And then people are drinking on the other side. There's all this horrible noise coming in. Here comes this group of ladies you know, there's only people from the church, ladies in Kenya from the church that dress a certain way. Hello. You know them shoes with the square bottoms on the back? You know them kind of flowered dresses that look like you, had, you just picked the worst fabric you could pick and you decided to make a top and a dress. And they walk like this and their hair is done and, they, you know, and they, maybe they have their Bible. Just, you could just tell, you could smell it even a while away. They're, these are church folks. 
And the group of church ladies walking in the mud, going to the hotel. I thought, my God, where on earth am I at? Anyway, that's just another side journey. But, but that's after, I, after I, I'm, I'm driving and I got all this barrage of nonsense coming at me from this quote-unquote Christian leader person or operative in the church. It wasn't a pastor. It was like one of these gospel singers, you know. So... I'm dry. I got I just got hit with all this stuff. I'm stressed out. I'm feeling bad. I was already annoyed from other things going on earlier in the day. And I'm like, what do I do? So the Lord said, pray. I said, thank you. So I start to pray. Yeah, Lord, I thank you for you're so good. And what now? What do we do with this person, Lord? I'm just trying to get. <laughs> And the Lord spoke this word, came like this, like whoosh, up from my spirit, a word of judgment out of my mouth. Whew. Boom, released. I said, that person's finished. They are finished. What they lost by mocking the prophet and talking to me like that. It's like, like Elisha when they said, go up, thou bald head, you fool. And the bears came out of the woods and ate them up. I'm not suggesting that would happen. I didn't pray for that either, but I just prayed, whatever. And the Lord spoke this word. They're losing something great, losing this. Boom, it came out of my mouth by the Spirit. I thought, <laughs> so I'm driving. I thought, I won. I just won. So I gave the Lord a hand. Of like I'm having church while I'm driving in my, in my van. I'm, I gave the Lord a hand, one hand on the wheel. Watch out. Hold on. Hallelujah. Put on a worship song. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going. I won. I just won. You, you need to know how to fight like that. Don't let anybody talk rubbish to you and abuse you. Lift your hands. Don't let anybody come in. These crazy people. Now this fits in the category in 3 John 2. Prosperity, good health, and a sound mind. You know? 2 Timothy 1.7 talks about God's not giving us a spirit of fear, but a power of love. Let's forget about the fear part for a minute. Just power, love, and a sound mind. That's a promise. We take that to think because fear was the first word. That's all it means. No, there's several things. Power and love and a sound mind that have nothing to do with fear. You get it? They can replace fear, but they're four different things. God's not giving us a spirit. There's a spirit there, devil, of fear. Number two, it's the second thing. But he's giving us power, third thing, love, fourth thing, and a sound mind, the fifth thing. So I thought the sound mind. But people that don't have a sound mind, guess what they do? They accuse you of what they're guilty of. All these Democrats in America is another example. They're so full of corruption. People are finding out stuff, even Pelosi's family, even Biden's family, all these people. They're all together with Soros and the rest. They're all together, they're all linked up together. The quote unquote whistleblower who pencil neck decided not to bring forward because he got scared. It turns out that he worked for him, and they, these people, they're so deep in the sewage, hello, of corruption. And then they want to come out and point at the good man? Guess what happens? It backfires on them. Lift your hands. I just taught you a good warfare principle. Take the strong posture and stance and go after the thing. Don't let anybody mess with you. And you need prayer, I'm here to pray for you. I'm your papa, I'm your friend, I'm your intercessor, I'm your prophet, I'm your pastor. I'll pray for you, tell me what it's going on. I'll deal with it, I'll deal with them. I have people in major organizations, they're fighting battles in their workplace. They tell me every detail, too much details most of the time. But I read them all because they partner with me, you know what I mean? Very well, not cheap partners. These are very generous partners. I mean, they... they they, they're very, extremely generous. If you, I'm telling you, you don't know. I don't mean like a few thousand here and there. I mean like masses of buckets of partnership. So I'm reading all their information and praying. And then bef before I even get done praying half the time, the miracle already happened. I've spoken about this before. While you're yet praying, what before you even yet speak, I've already answered, the Lord said. Why? Because of the connection with the anointing. And their, their relatives get miracles, their people get miracles. Why? Because they're connected. You need to be a partner with me. And that alone, I can know the prayer requests and pray. 
God could speak to me and I'll pray and I'll speak. Yes, I will. And I do. Every day of my life I do it. But at some point in the day I'm praying for somebody somewhere. I'm just doing these transactions with heaven on the behalf of people all the time. We need to, we need to do it even more than we're doing it. And they're getting miracles like that. Lift your hands. You people have no idea what you're recipients of yet. Maybe some of you know. Some things are manifesting. People that become millionaires under, our anoint, under this anointing that God's put upon us. It's his mercy and grace. We didn't, we didn't earn. He called us first. God wants you to be rich. One thing I really feel the Lord wants me to buy, uh, Mr. Biden was so belligerent to come against Trump. It's like when you do that, you put your, you put your finger in the socket, in the electric socket. And it's blowing up now. Now, in fact, people on the Republican side, they're so mad about it all, they're going to start to go after these people. Oh, yeah. Do you know, during the Russian witch hunt, the collusion witch hunt that they call Today I found a, a nice meme that somebody wrote. Some people are so clever. They said, oh, just wait till the Democrats find out that Trump is colluding with God. Oh, I love it. It's on my Facebook page. You can see it. Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Mann. Just wait till the Democrats find out that Trump is really in collusion with God. <laughs> So Biden now is all but pew. these other strange people, the Democratic front runners, went way ahead of him. He may be out of the race. Someone said he doesn't have enough money. None of them have enough money to mess with Trump. Trump just reaches in half of one of his pockets. He could blow, he could buy your life ten times over. Praise the Lord. Do you know the Democratic Party, the DNC, uh, they, they spent three billion dollars against Trump in 2016 and still lost. <laughs> Woo, God can turn it around for good. I tell you, the devil, the devil can work for you. And every time they come against him in a negative way, they're saying his name. It makes him more famous. How many times in a day in the world is the word Trump said out of someone's mouth? <sighs> you ever think about that? I thought about that today. I said, Lord, and yesterday, I think I was thinking about this. How many times a day does the word Trump? When you have predictive text, text in your phone, you just go TR, Trump will appear at the bottom. Sometimes with just the T alone, you start to put his name, it'll show that because his name is everywhere. Wow. Powerful. As hard as it is because of these warfares that he's having, it's bringing glory to to God and, and the advancement of the kingdom through many great things that are happening through him. Now, something else just happened, and I believe the man was probably already a Christian, but uh, the president of Brazil today, I come as a newscaster to tell you this, the president of Brazil today, Jair Bolsonaro, who God had me prophesy that he would win the election in Brazil before that, remember that? And he on the platform today uh, prayed with people in the, in the, in the big uh, stadium meetings that are going on in Brazil right now from the American revivalists that are there. I think it's called The Send. They did The Call, Lou Engel, and then they did The Call, now it's The Send, something like that. They're in Brazil now. And the president uh, prayed the whole prayer and did the whole thing to be born again today publicly. Lift your hand. The president of Brazil. Brazil is, is, it's happening in Brazil. It's happening in America. You have Holy Ghost filled people. For President Trump to stand up and say, he's, he's a Christian. And he goes, I brought my Bible. How many have seen those things that I posted? I, I brought my Bible. And then he'd have Stephen Curtis Chapman come sing, How Great Thou Art. And great is thy faithfulness in the rose garden and the presence of God falls and everybody lifts their hands and start crying. It has never happened in our country. 
Many, many even big people now, celebrities, some, many of them. Not the p possessed, crazed ones, but the people that are saying, they're saying this is the best president we've ever, ever had in America. Lift your hand. Because he's doing so much, so much is getting done. And when they want to literally hang him up, how many remember I prophesied that these people, they're like Haman in the Bible. They set up a, a, a destruction for Mordecai, the chosen one, but they're gonna hang on it themselves. And these people that collude together in the Democratic Party, but they'll still carry on, they're full of the devil. They'll still try, but they're gonna get nowhere. And I'm praying, listen to me, in November, in the election, that everybody votes Republican, red, down the, down the whole ticket. And the House and the Senate, the Senate gets more Republicans, less Democrats, and the House flips back Republican. Then you got it, the whole thing is locked up. Now the Democrats can't do anything. They can't do no committees. They can't do no impeachment. They'll never get the votes. They won't even try to propose such a thing because before they even start, they can't get the votes. See, they knew they had the votes in the House. That's why they went for it. They had the other Democrats on their side. So they know they could push it through there. They just took their best shot. How arrogant is it to do something like that? How arrogant does the person, a crazed does a person have to be to rip up the president's speech that's talking about the good of the nation, of an entire nation of 350 million people? Lift your hands. How arrogant. How foolish. How possessed does one have to be? How drunk does someone need to be how hammered, you know, you know when they take the, someone made a joke, one of these uh, bloggers, uh, his name is Mark K, he's a real funny cat, uh, Mark K, K-A-Y-E. He has a, like a blog, he's doing this political thing. He goes a little bit wild sometimes, but you know, we take it with a grain of salt, or take it with a sip of ginger tea, but he, he, he's a funny guy. But he said, uh, so they showed her like doing the gavel thing, bang, bang. And then he goes like this, he goes, I bet that desk wasn't the only thing that got hammered today. <coughs> Meaning her. Hello, hammered, you know, when someone gets drunk, you, you, people are very, you people are very interesting. You're just looking at me, okay. I bet that desk wasn't the only thing that got hammered today. <sighs> Praise God. Lift your hands, let's pray in the Holy Ghost. We're living in a great day, as bad as it is out there, you know? Gross darkness covers the world, right? Isaiah 60, verse two. But my light shall be seen upon you. The glory of the Lord's risen upon you from the first verse. He said, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Remember the prophecy also, the Lord had me say that Trump would influence the world. Many world leaders, many other people, look at Brazil now. Look at Poland, they're announcing Jesus Christ as their Lord. They love a guy like Donald Trump. There are people even in England that love him, even though some liberal people are a bit crazed, you know, on the other way. The people had rallies outside. We love Trump. We love Trump. Oh, my God. But, you know, here's a sad thing. Some of my uh, uh, people of color in America, some preachers, some of them might be watching this because they're on my page. We know each other. We used to be friends, you know. I pray we still are, but when you're right, you're right. Praise the Lord. The truth is the truth. The truth is the truth, and I'm flowing. If you like it, fine. If you don't, it's okay, too. And because of their ethnic, eth ethnic suasion, ethnic suasion, if I can make a word, ethnic persuasion, you know, thing, they have to hate Trump because he's the white man, and he's a bad guy, and he's this and that. He's the one that stood up for people of color more than anybody. Bush didn't do it. Clinton certainly didn't do it. They stole all the money from the people in Haiti that were dying. You know when the earthquake hit Haiti, they raised billion dollars for that? The money never got to Haiti. I know, I know leaders in Haiti, political men and pastors, they told me the story. The island of Haiti hates the Clintons. They'd kill them. If they left them there, unwatched by media and with no security, they wouldn't come home. Lift your hand. Those people probably would. I don't know what they'd do. They'd get their voodoo dolls and they'd cut them in pieces and they'd do a ritual with them. People suffering. My God, the filth and the devastation and the death and the disease. Those people needed to be helped. And here you have people raising money. 
and, they, and you don't give it to them. You just pocket all of it. That's the epitome of wickedness. I mean, hell, hell fire is waiting for some people, I'm telling you. Hell is enlarging itself. You know, I wonder, I wonder if that's going on today. You notice how all the volcanoes are erupting all over the world? I wonder if hell's getting a lot full of a lot more people. <laughs> and the pressure of all the crowd there, the mass population down in the earth where hell is, is pushing the fire out, pushing it upward. Pressure cooker. I wonder. The Bible says hell will enlarge itself. But it was never God's intention for any person to go there. God wants everybody saved, even the most corrupt politician, the most corrupt businessman, the filthiest sinner, the worst murderer. Lift your hands. Jesus wants everybody to be saved, every, every person to be saved. And I'm not saying any of this to be divisive or provocative or with a different persuasion politically or whatever. I, I just want to be on the side of what's right. A child in the womb being able to be born without someone rich, reaching in with some device and ripping them to shreds and murdering them inside the womb, I, that's a good thing. A curse could, will come on the nation because of abortion. And you see the former administration, how they unlocked so many devils, so many things that are in, in, in invading the society. Anyway, I won't go into that right now. But the Bible says in Romans 10, 9 to 14, you can make a note of that, but it says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with your heart God has raised him from the dead, this is where prosperity starts. This is where health and healing starts. This is where deliverance starts and ends. It's all in there, beginning and the end, Alpha and the Omega. This is where life eternal comes through this right here. And I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, if anyone has not made Jesus the Lord of their life, I pray they'll do it. It doesn't matter how lost you are. It doesn't matter how bad it is. You could be one of these people that are opposing everything good, like some of the ones we're talking about. You, you could be one of them and have an experience and give your heart to Jesus and things will change for you. I pray it'll happen in Jesus' name because the other alternative is the worst thing that could ever happen to someone, for someone to be lost. Let me talk about that. The peace of mind, the wealth and health that you want, the good life that you want, it all comes from the favor of God. Lift your hand. Somebody was telling me that on the phone the other day. I think you were saying that to me on the phone the other day. About through prayer, everything happens. You said that, yeah. And, and by the grace of God, and God was talking to you about tithing. I received that. Thank you so much. Bless you for that. Malachi 10, 10, Malachi 3, 10 to 12 is yours. The open heavens, the blessing being poured out, the devourer being rebuked. Oh, yes, when you tithe, it all happens. But you need to have a mediator. You got to have, you know, God doesn't say, send your and pesa to, there's a special number, 7777, it gets to heaven, and Safaricom Heaven Branch processes the money and puts it in your phone. No, there's no Safaricom branch there. There's no postal service or posta. You call it posta? There's no P.O. Box. P.O. Box what? 777 Glory Boulevard, Heaven's Way, Third Heaven. What's the zip code, postcode? I don't know. What's the country code? I don't know. What's the continent? I don't know. Heaven. Send a check there. See who could, who could, who could deliver the mail. <laughs> I saw a tractor in the snow in the mid, in the, out in the great wild west of America. Tractor wheels, 1940, to deliver the mail. They were going through the snow and the ice with a tractor, like a tank. You know, tra tank has those... Uh, you know, and the wheels are inside, and it's like rolling over uh, rugged terrain. It could just drive over anything. It was a postal thing. They were delivering the mail in the middle of the horrible weather. But to get your tithe or your seed to God from earth, you have to do it through a storehouse vessel. You know, he said, bring all the tithes into the storehouse. That's the man of God. That's the ministry. That's the anointing that you're going to sow into, where you can reap from. You're sowing. Jesus said, give. To who? To a person. 
and it shall be given to you. Give measure, press down, shake it together, running over. Shall men give it your bosom the same measure you measure out, same measure we measure back to you again. Said it too fast, buy the tape and play it back slow. Praise the Lord. But it starts with our confession. With the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I want to pray right now. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing that God has just brought this to me right now. I feel this like grace. I pray that some of these big wigs that are doing evil things, even the stuff I'm preaching against sin and evil, that's what I'm doing. I'm not talking about a person. You know, please don't misunderstand me. I'm not talking about a person, talking bad about a person, judging them. No, 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 no. We're just telling the stories of what's going on and differentiating between good and evil. But I pray that some of these same people that are doing evil things, they can have a, 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 an appearance of the Lord in their life. Wouldn't that be great to see someone that's doing evil, that's just like preposterous. It's, it's abominable. It's horrific. It's, un it's like unreal. You're like, can this person be this evil to do this? And of course, people that have done evil against me, horrific evil, more than I can tell in, in a whole day. If I talk for a whole day, I couldn't tell all the stories. Wouldn't it be better if they get saved? But I get annoyed. I, tell you, I get annoyed when people give me that cultural backlash. Oh, can't they repent? What about the mercy of God? I'm like, what was the mercy of God and the repentance when they were doing, committing horrible crimes to destroy someone's life? Where was God then? Now, a person gets caught and they think they're trying to escape, still a self-centered thing they're doing. But can a person really get saved by the grace of God and really change? I hope so. Thieves never restitute in my, in my evaluation. I've never seen one give the money back. I've heard it's happened in America. People got put to the wall. They said, okay, we'll give you. But in Africa, Kenya, T-I-K, T-I-A, this is Kenya, this is Africa. T-I-K, T-I-A. The person gets caught, you say, give back the money. They'll never do it. Admit you did it. They'll, they'll lie until they die. How many know what I'm talking about? You could take a chainsaw and tell you, I'm going to cut your leg off. You're going to have no leg in the next 120 seconds. Unless you find the money, give it back. They'll cry and lie. They'll lie again and say yes and run away with their legs still. They won't give you the money. I don't know what's up with people. They, they, I guess you just want to burn in hell. Somebody, again, I'm not mad, I'm preaching. How many know the difference? Hello, I'm not complaining, I'm preaching. Under the anointing, I'm happy, I'm a happy guy. Happy, happy, joy, joy, hallelujah, ha, 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 I'm all right. I'm fine, truthfully. The Holy Ghost wants me to say these things. We're on, a, we're on a mission to see corruption destroyed. Hello. In America, in Africa, in everywhere. Destroyed. The criminals to be brought to justice. And that, now you have these people of another religion going slaughtering people. What should become of them? You're going to go up to them and say, praise the Lord, it's okay. If they catch you and tie you up, they'll chop your head off too. The leader of the Christian organization in Nigeria, Can, I can't remember his name now, they had, there's a video going around the internet. They chopped the guy's head off on video. Do you know, he, he's a martyr. I guess, I'm sure he gets a reward somehow. Good, a, a good one, but he's not here anymore. I'd rather that he be able to carry out his work on earth and live, live to be an old man and do something for the, for the planet and not leave. But do you know how humiliating that is? Here's the last view of this guy, and then his head is coming off with some dog with a sword making his chance. Are you kidding me? So the people of Nigeria need to rise up. Maybe they all need to take, I said this to someone, one, uh, an apostle on the phone, and I, and I believe it. Maybe the people need to take up arms because the government is protecting these people. The guy in the head of the government's of their religion, so he's not doing anything against it. He's not going to do anything about it. Trump, unfortunately, can't get too involved right now. He has a re-election going on right now. He needs to be very careful. It's obvious he needs to be a little careful. How many know that's wisdom? He's not the kind of guy to be careful. Trust me, he, he'll come out. If he sees something, wants to do it, he's going to do it. He doesn't care. 
And he's right, and God just helps him slide through and get it done anyway. But probably he can't send the American military into Nigeria to go slaughtering people right now. Hello? Hello? And that's pretty sad. I wish he could. I know the Nigerians pray that he would. You know they pray, Lord, send Trump. Touch Trump's heart. They're praying that. Let him send the American military. Just drop down here at Kaduna State. Just wipe, get, take, care, take all these people out. So if that can't happen, it probably can't for, for many reasons. As I said, uh, maybe the people need to take up arms there. The Nigerians. They say, you devils from hell. You think you're going to go around burning, killing? And you know what? The news reports, let me tell you, what the, even the fake news, what the news reports is always less than what it is. Can I tell you something? I have info. In Westgate, it wasn't no 76 people that died. In Nairobi, it was much more than that. In Riverside, when they hit the Riverside, they gave a number, a small number. It was much more than that. You'll never hear it in the news. So don't believe that it was this number, that's all it was. No, it's much worse than that. Because the media can't even report what was happening. While the thing in Rwanda was going on in 1994, in Kigali and throughout the country, they said 800,000 people were slaughtered in 100 days. That news didn't come out till well after it was all over. Bill Clinton was the president then. William Clinton was the president then of America. And at first, when he heard about it, he didn't want to do anything. He just said, ah. Africa. Yeah. Then after it, he cried a little bit, said, oh, I, I wish, you know, he talks, I wish I would have done something. Hillary, why didn't we do anything? And all those people died. You have no idea what that does to a human soul. I know a lady, I think she has a, a disorder because she's very overweight. She's a preacher, she's gifted. She's a teacher, she's a scholar, she's a preacher, she does all this. But she's very wounded in her heart. And God had been dealing with me about forgiveness. I, I teach, I taught it, this is several years ago, about finally, like, really forgiving people that have wronged you. How many know I've been terribly wronged? I mean, beyond, you, 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 many people don't even know the details, because so publicly I can't say everything. If you knew about people, what I know about them, what they actually did against me, you, you have no idea. I had to forgive. I've forgiven. That's why, I'm, that's why I can preach this with freedom. I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side of it. It's all right. I have this lady that does my laundry, she has a funny accent. She says, it's all right. It's all right. I said, hey, you ready now? You got the stuff ready? Yeah, I'm coming now. She says, it's all right. Lift your hand and say, it's all right. Come on, say it with accent. It's all right. It's not all right. It's all right. It's all right. I thought it was so funny. I put her on speakerphone. I, I jab her on the phone like, what? Is it okay? Are you sure? She said, it's all right. I said, wait a minute. Say that again. I'm like, I'm like I didn't hear. Is it okay? She said, it's all right. I have it on speakerphone. I have, I have some sound bites I recorded. So I want to make a, 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 a sound bite of her. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. I just need to. This is one of the things on the to-do list. I need someone to help me with that technically. You know. Someone told me uh, I shouted at some people in a meeting, and he was laughing his head off, our technical guy. I said something pretty, pretty wild you know, in the Kenyan audience. He said, I need to make the sound bite. Make the sound bite. Let me hear it. I don't even know. I, I can't imagine I said such a thing. But under the anointing, you know, it, it could happen. Sometimes you forget what you said. Praise the Lord. Blame God. He's dealing with issues. Issues. You know in Kenya how you do that? Issues. You ever hear people do that? One lady told me one time something about British. Yeah, the British. She said it for like half an hour. The British. You know? You know these funny people? Very cute. I can't play it now. I can't play it now, but if anybody wants to see it, I can play it. I was driving on the road uh, this week, and this kid 
this little boy from school, and his sister was in front of him, you know, a little bit way ahead of him. And uh, he's talking to himself. And I heard him. I had the window. I opened the window. I was like, wow. He's having an own conversation, very loud, funny little schoolboy, really creative kid, yeah? So he's talking. So I turned like this, and I, I put the video on. I said, I said, hey! He went, hey! <laughs> Back at me. <laughs> I said, wait! He went, hey! He started talking to himself, but this time the volume, but, and then his sister got involved. They started looking at me, yelling. I, I, I laughed so hard, the phone was shaking. I had to just go, ha, and I turned it off. These kids are funny, man. Lift your hands. People are beautiful. You know something? The Lord spoke to me while I was on the road, uh, driving on that road. He spoke to me then, too. He says, you know what? He reminded me. He said, these people, how they are, they had nothing to do with that. How many know you had nothing to do with your skin color, your ethnicity, where you were born? Everything is beautiful in its own way. God made everything beautiful. It's the devil and craziness that happens and sin and Evil that happens in people, that's the problem. But the person, the people themselves are beautiful. So everybody needs to confess the Lord as their Savior. From the heart, you can go toward righteousness. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. For there's no distinction between any ethnicity. For the same Lord who's over all is rich to all who call on him. Call upon him in his name. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let's lift our hands and pray for the whole world to get saved. I'm praying. How then can they call on him if they've not believed? And how can they believe in whom they've not heard about? And how can they hear without a preacher? So that's our job to be the mediator. And when you support the ministry, you're helping in the world mission that we can bless and reach more people. But everybody's beautiful. Even the unlovely are lovely somewhere. But, but there's another side to this. It's a two-edged sword. We don't need to put up with the devil and his garbage. Praise the Lord. There's warfare to be done. Lift your hands. There's warfare to be made, to be waged. War to be waged on the enemy. But I'm praying that everyone can get touched and get saved. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Where you are right now, you just if you've never accepted Jesus as your Savior, say, Lord, I receive you right now as my Savior, Lord Jesus. You are the Son of God. I've heard about it, but I believe it, and I accept that right now, that you are. On the third day, you arose again, and I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Just say that out of your mouth. Lord Jesus, I accept you. I receive you as my Lord and Savior right now. Cleanse me from all sin, from all unrighteousness. Take me out of the hands of the devil and put me in your hands. And I know things will begin to change and get better in my life. The source of all grace, all riches, all wealth, all health, all peace of mind, deliverance from fear, deliverance from spiritual death, deliverance from everything evil and many of the things I've been talking about in this message and others are, 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 are fixable by the Holy Spirit, by receiving the touch of God. Let's pray for our family members again. I want to do that again. Father, thank you for the touch of heaven coming upon all of our relatives that every single one of them will be born again. None of them will get to hell. They'll all escape hell and make heaven because of our prayer. And Lord, if it's not us that they can listen to, you know, some people can't listen to you. Don't try to barge your way in and say, I'm going to preach to you. You're my relative. They may look at you and say, who are you? You're my family. I don't, I don't have to listen to you. Just accept that. Be, be adult enough. Be strong enough. Say, now, th th then to go pray. Say, it's okay. I'll, I'll plant the seed and tell you the word. You don't have to act responsive right now. It's okay. But I'm going to go now in my closet and pray that God will send someone that you can hear from. Somebody that can open the door to your heart that you'll listen to them. That they'll be listened to by the person who needs Jesus, and that's everybody. Let's pray right now. You're awful quiet. Let's cut our brush. Kayla had some. Soko ra rinde le sam brande le shekato. Papra ba te lo shakiato. Jesus, I thank you that you're visiting people, even the worst of sinners. 
even these people that did evil. Because the other alternative is they get blown off the earth and they go straight to the fire without remedy of getting out. That could be necessary, it seems, for the rescue of people that they were going to kill. But it's not the best thing for them or for anyone. It's better that they receive you and change. I'm reminded of a, a, a documentary I saw the other day, and I wasn't looking for it. It just kept popping up on the screen. I said, let me look at this guy for a minute. A mass murderer in America killed two kids, was put in jail, got a lighter sentence. I don't know, what he, some plea thing he did or something. He ended up getting out again. Then he went, and went on a rampage, killing women everywhere. Horrible ways. Now he's in forever, 250 years. And, you know, a guy like that, he killed once, got out, and then when he's being interviewed, he refused to talk about the kids that he killed. He said that's a condition. When the guy pressed him again at the end, he threw the mic and got up and walked out. He said, this is over. I'm gone. I, I told you I'm not going to talk about it. So it's so diabolical what he did. But then he got out of jail and went killing more. He was messed up from being abused when he was little, very abused. Horrible details. He talked about some of the details in this document. I don't want to say. A warped animal, a warped creature. Now he's in. So the thing was, he should have been kept in. That he couldn't go do that to other people. You understand what I'm saying? And the criminal justice system will be a punishment to someone like that. They're going to be in jail forever. They're never going to get out. Because they're a harm to society. So someone like that needs to be tied up and curtailed and contained, detained. Yes? Same thing with these other people that are bringing onslaughts of evil in the world. They need to be dealt with. But still it's bad if someone ends up in hell. Let's keep praying. Spirit of the Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, for going out to touch people where they are. Find them. Raise up laborers. You said the, the harvest is very ripe and great, big, but the laborers are so few. Raise up laborers that'll be vocal mouthpieces to lead people to the Lord. I'm reminded of some friends I have in the U.S. They go witnessing all the time. Any restaurant they go to, any place they go to, any place of business they go to, on the streets, anywhere, anywhere. And they tell people the gospel. And then I see the results. People just get saved just like that. I thought, I thought they'd be more resistant Resistance. I thought the people wouldn't accept, and they just do. I said, I just led that person to the Lord. They come back. They were gone for a while. I knew what they were doing. I said, you stay on your mission over there. <laughs> I'm waiting. If you need me, call me. But if you're going to take care of it yourself, just do it. They come back and say, that person just got saved. That person just got saved. And they're winning hundreds of people to the Lord. Some people, they, there's no resistance. They're just ready. Lift your hands. I pray that everyone gets harvested correctly. They all get to know you and accept you. Let none of them be left out. So there's the dealings of God against evil, yes. Even retribution and judgment. But the ultimate is that people get saved. Are you hearing me? And the same God that said, I want to save your soul, said, I want to bless you in your finances. I want to bless you in your, your health. I want to bless you in your mind and your emotions and your subconscious and conscious mind, your heart. I want to help you in your life. I want to help you be successful. But it all comes from the grace of God. Let's lift our hands really seriously and just receive the touch of heaven right now. Father, thank you for your grace, your favor. What we need and want, it takes you to make it happen. And the things that I have that I can't talk about publicly, many, many things that are going on that are so good, you are making them happen. It's like the details. There's no way we could say all these things. So many things you're doing behind the scenes. You're making it happen. And we thank you for the treasures. We thank you for the mission being funded. And we thank you also for our partners. You know, like, you're a partner. You're doing an investment and a transaction for yourself. But the amount you're giving or doing is not changing the whole world through us. We need massive amounts of treasure to do that. Huge amount. Now, if someone has a, a large seat to give, property, vehicles, building, 
some deal you do that you made millions and you're giving your tithe and offering from that. Great, great, bravo, do it. Send it. I mean, that'll help. The more, the better. But all the precious people that are, you're giving what you can give, you're doing your own investment and your own transaction with God through us. Are you seeing that? And the, the anointing will like get on the thing and make the transaction happen and the harvest back for you. And the testimonies I'm hearing are, are beyond amazing. So the Lord has all that, but it all comes from his grace. How many will keep praying on this, this next uh, hours and days uh, for God to touch the world and save these evildoers, but also to bless you in every way that you can advance the kingdom for him? In Jesus' name. The information will be on the screen, how you can tithe, how you can sow, how you can give, how you can partner with this world mission that we're on. I love you much, praying for you and all your loved ones to be saved, for you to be prospering, healthy, delivered, and very successful. But number one, that you be a great advancer of the kingdom and a soul winner for Jesus Christ in his glory as we are. In Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, for the touch of heaven upon my friend right now. In Jesus' name, see you on the next broadcast. Love you much.